Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Today is Bank Holiday Monday. I've just got back from a dinosaur exhibit, which was uh, pretty fun to check out, and I thought I'd get a video done today as well. A couple of weeks ago, I put up a video of me building my first ever free NAS. It's a 16 terabyte free NAS featuring the Ryzen 5 5600G and is also passively called by the Noctua NHP1. If you haven't seen that video yet, then I highly recommend checking it out. It was a lot of fun to put together. But for today's video, I thought we'd take a little look at how the actual setup went and what using a free NAS is actually like. So, one of the first things I should clear up is that something I was not aware of is FreeNAS has now fully migrated over to TrueNAS. So technically, I built a TrueNAS system, just to clear that up. But the actual principle of FreeNAS is still there with TrueNAS. So, once the actual system was set up, I then went ahead and got a TrueNAS USB install. I then got TrueNAS installed on the local system. Then I was able to access the TrueNAS from a different desktop to actually manage it directly. So, one thing to note, while I am going to take a look at some features of TrueNAS in today's video, I am by no means anywhere near an expert when it comes to how to run a TrueNAS. This is my first time ever running one, but for today's video, it's just to give you a little overview of how my TrueNAS system went and the actual setup, and some of the things that you may not be aware of if you're considering doing this yourself. If you are looking for a detailed tutorial, then make sure to check out Craft Computing's tutorial for installing FreeNAS or TrueNAS. His tutorials are really straightforward and helped me get the ground running on this system, so I highly recommend checking those out. So, once you've gone through the actual TrueNAS install, you should have an IP address which you can enter in on a different system in a browser, and it will look something like this. So, this is the actual dashboard for my TrueNAS, and we've got a couple of uh, useful pieces of information on here. So, if we start over here on system information, we've got the actual uptime for the system, it's showing us eight days, but it's actually been up for a bit longer than that, but it was knocked off for a day because we did have uh, some thunderstorms incoming. So I just knocked it off just in case there was any power cuts. But I've been running the system now for about two weeks or so, something like that. And then quite handily, we've got this CPU report in here. So we can see we've got our Ryzen 5 5600G and we've got 12 threads showing. And at the moment, we're only idling, but we're looking at about 20 odd 8C, which is really good. So the NHP one seems to be uh, handling it just fine. And when I have done some file transfers that have lasted quite a long time, the highest it got was around 40C, which is perfectly fine. So the NHP one is doing a perfect job. If you're interested in learning more about the NHP one, then I highly recommend checking out the review I put a couple of weeks back. So, and then we've got our system memory, so we can see what has been reserved for ZFS cache, which is quite handy on there. We've got 16 gigabytes of memory, which is equally matching our 16 terabytes of storage, which is ideal when running ZFS. And then we've got our pool. So I've actually called the pool JackNAS because... And then we've got some uh, little bits on here. So we've got our total disk, we have four. So that reflects the four, four terabyte WD reds that are in the system. And obviously the pool is online, which is good to know. Disks with errors, I haven't encountered any errors yet. But that's something I'm gonna get to later in the video. And then new space. So at the moment, I've basically backed up all my YouTube uploads, all my pictures, music, and also all my games. And yeah, we're looking 13%. So it looks like we've got plenty of overhead for the time being. One of the things I am going to have to try and figure out though is, even though I have backed up all my games, how am I going to go about updating those games as they're going to be older versions? So it's not something I've looked into too much yet. For all the games, it wouldn't be a problem, but for more recent games where there's more updates coming up down the line, I don't know. I'll have to think about it and see if I can find a solution for that, and uh, I'll let you know if I do. So I think what we'll do, we'll just take a look at the actual uh, storage array that I've set up, and I'll explain how I've gone about setting it up, and some of the reasons why I've chose to do certain things. So, if we go over to storage, we can check out my pool. Here we go. So we've got my main pool, which is the JackNAS 10TB Z1. Now, the reason for that 10TB and Z1 is that even though I have 16 terabytes of storage, RAID Z1 basically allows for one drive to fail and still maintain the integrity of the rest of your data across the other drives. Now, a lot of people would argue that going for a RAID Z2 would be a much better option and would be much better at reducing your chance of losing data. However, if I did that, then I would have completely halved my 16 terabyte array and I didn't really want to lose that much storage. So I thought as a compromise, we'll go Z1. As I said before, this is not massively crucial to my overall 
day-to-day -day life and there is going to be a secondary backup of this which is not a problem and you shouldn't really rely on this too heavily as a backup in the first place so if i lose one drive i'm fine but if i lose two then i could potentially lose the entire array but it's just trial and error for me at the moment and seeing what works best for me so i can go for z1 for now and if that comes back to bite me so be it but at least i know not to do that for the future but for now, at least that gives me a fairly maximized amount of storage down the line. So, one of the other things I've done is I've created individual data sets for each of the machines that are accessing this network. And then also one data set specifically for my PC Jack work. So we can see those be here. We've got Big Red, which is my main system, which I use for all my video editing and also my main bit of gaming. And then we've got PC Jack as a data set. So that's where all my videos and files are backed up to. And then we've also got Redux Machine. So that's all of the data that's being saved from the Redux Machine, my VR mini ITX setup. Again, if you're interested in checking that out, then uh, I'll make sure that's linked in the video. It's a 5600X and RTX 3060 Ti build in the NR200P from Coolmaster. So yeah, it was a pretty fun build. So uh, I definitely checked that out. So the idea of using these data sets is just a good way to separate each system from one another and have a more clear path for where everything should be stored. So besides that, obviously one of the other things I have enabled on here is I've got what are called system snapshots. Now, the purpose of a snapshot is that you can set it up to run on a certain basis. It will provide you with an actual snapshot of your data set at the time it's captured. So for me personally, I've got it set up across all three machines and they run on a weekly basis at midnight on Sunday. So I then have an actual backup in the case that I lose a file and I can go to my previous versions in Windows and reaccess that file from there. So as you can see, I've set it up on here to keep the snapshot for four weeks. And then after that threshold, that previous snapshot is then deleted. It should provide me with a decent bit of a fail safe in case I do lose any files, but it's nice to have that, but there, it's pretty handy. Now, there's actually two things I haven't done when setting up this system yet. And I've wanted to get smart tests and scrubs set up. So if we start with smart tests, I'll run over a bit of what those are for, and we'll get some schedule to run on the JackNAS. So we're gonna go over the smart tests, and as you can see, I haven't got any smart tests set up, but the actual idea for running smart tests is that you can run either short or long tests over a certain period of time, and it will basically monitor for any smart errors. And if you are encountering smart errors, then it may mean that there is a critical drive error that you need to be wary of, and then you will have to replace that drive. So it's a handy way of uh, letting you know in advance, just in case there is gonna be any issues. So I think for myself, we'll go for one long smart test a month, which should give me enough peace of mind to know in case we do encounter any issues down the line. So we're gonna get this smart test set up. So we're gonna to go to add, and we want it to run on A to three all the way to zero. So let's go for all those and type. One long test a month should suffice for my needs as it's just a home server and not in an actual business use. I don't really wanna run this at the same time as other tasks. So the only other task at the moment are my periodic snapshots, which are running at midnight every Sunday. And I think what we'll do, we'll set this to run monthly. So it'll do it on the first day of the month at midnight. That should be fine. And click submit. There we go. So I've got my long smart test scheduled now. And then one of the other ones I wanna do is my scrub tasks. Now running scrub tasks should allow me to check for data integrity. And I can run these a bit more frequently than I would for a smart test as it's not as demanding. So I think what we'll do, we'll set it up to run every week and we'll set a threshold for these for 14 days. That should be sufficient so that we can check. So if we go to add pool, we wanna do it for the Dragnas. That's the only pool that we have set up. And we'll change our threshold days to 14. And then our schedule, we're gonna go for weekly. There we go, and that's all set up now. And just click submit. There we go. So now I've got my periodic snapshot set up and I've got my smart tests and also my scrubs. This should allow me to monitor the overall health of the system. And if I do want to maintain this NAS over a long period of time, I do have to make sure that I'm accounting for the actual integrity of my data. So doing these tasks should help me out in that regard. And yeah, like I said, with all those set up, I can actually show you the data sets that appear in my Windows share. So if I go to my file explorer, and as you can see by here, I've got my NAS appearing on here as a network location. And there are my three data sets all separated. So we can go into, let's check out PC Jack. My videos, YouTube, 
and here we go so I've got all my YouTube uploads backed up on here and if I wanted to access one of those snapshots I don't have one available yet but I would go into here click properties and go to previous versions and then in here is where my snapshots would appear which would allow me to take a file if it is lost from this recovered version so yeah that's about the gist of running the true NAS like I said it's my first ever time running one and it can seem a little intimidating at first but there's a lot of tutorials out there which can help you out like I said this is a very rough overview of how I run it but I definitely recommend checking out some tutorials on YouTube or even the actual TrueNAS installation guide. That should point in the right direction. But if you do have a lot of files that you do want to have stored on an actual NAS rather than on external drives or stuff like that, then I do recommend doing it because it's a really fun and interesting way to manage your data. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoy it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.